Hello and welcome to um, DFY's headquarters in Sully Hill, Birmingham. Um, I'm Jack Vivian and I'm going to talk you through the talk that I did at Search Birmingham uh, about a month ago now. So like Charles said, we gave our attendees around um, a month to go out and apply all the information before we release these slides to the public. Uh, my talk is on advanced backlink analysis and competition analysis as well. Um, so if you don't already know me, um, so basically I've been working with Charles Float for probably coming up six years now. Um, so I started off at Black Hat Community as the community manager, which is where most of you might know me from. Um, so I just helped with the day-to-day -day running of the group, um, as well as putting out a little bit of content uh, before. Uh, BHC disbanded, uh, basically Todd Foster offered me a job at his agency, Casio, which is one of the biggest Canadian agencies. Um, and yeah, basically there I spent most of my time uh, specializing in, in on-page optimization. Um, before I was offered a job by Charles at um, his Birmingham office with his uh, rapidly expanding uh, SEO AI. Um, now, to be honest, most of my time is spent with uh, DFY Links. Uh, about a year ago, we were actually a private members club, um, but we decided to launch to the public. And to be honest, we've been growing from strength to strength uh, ever since. So we offer pretty much every type of link that you'd want right now. So what are we going to cover in today's talk? So first of all, we're going to start off with competition analysis. Can you afford to rank in this niche? Uh, this is more to like make sure that you can get your return on investment. Like you can't go in expecting to be able to rank for payday loans with a thousand pound link budget. Um, you're just going to waste your time and your money. So this is making sure that the niche is realistic for you. Then we're going to go into backlink building, um, backlink building strategy. So this is how to apply what we learn in the competition analysis and how we can build a campaign that allows you to rank. <coughs> So, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, the SERPs are super chaotic at the moment. Um, I personally feel that if you uh, had two sites and did exactly the same on both sites, that one might end up at the bottom of page three, whereas the other one might end up at the you know middle of page one, for example. It, there's just some level of random randomness in the SERPs at the moment, because I see a lot of people doing everything right, but not getting um, the movement that... I would expect and they would expect. So this is partly the reason why we also recommend that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So like I said, uh, at DFY we manage a lot of campaigns. So we probably manage, I'd say, over 50 campaigns um, each month. Uh, we're also building a minimum of a thousand links per month. So um, obviously, like this is where we're getting our data from. You, you don't have to listen to us, but we do have a lot of data that, to be honest, unless you're a super, super big agency, you're not going to be building as many links as us. Um, so here are a couple of the results from our client campaigns. And don't get me wrong, this is only one aspect of uh, SEO. This is only the off page, so we can't take full credit for these results. So. Competition analysis, can I actually rank for this keyword? So we're going to break this down into four separate sections, domain power, domain relevance, backlink power, and backlink relevance. So domain power, what do I mean by domain power? So while Ahrefs metric isn't perfect by any means, it's the metric that we go off of. Other people use DA and Trustflow, but for us, we just use uh, domain rating. Um, so for me, when I think about domain power, I always think there's an entry level of... Um, power that's needed to enter a SERP. So for example, when you're looking at these competitive niches such as casino, it's very unlikely that you're going to see um, a DR30 ranking in the top uh, five positions if all the other sites are DR70. So when we're looking at domain power, I'm looking at the average of the SERP and also what the lowest and the highest is. And don't get me wrong, outliers do exist, but I just don't tend to spend too much time focusing on that. Like as SEOs, we love to like, you know, look at the site that's ranking with the least links and stuff. And but they are outliers, so I'd rather spend my time making sure that, you know, 80% of my campaigns are super successful and I have a really good strike rate. Okay, so now we're on domain power. So when we're at DFY, this is the way that we break down domain power. So we obviously look at the SERP, the top positions, and look at, you know, what the average is, the range is, like I previously said. But we also break it down at referring domain level. So if, here I've got an example, Gear Hungry. It's a massive affiliate site that most people know of by now. It does super well and this makes a lot of money. So what I do is I export all the referring domains uh, from Gear Hungry um, on Ahrefs, then I plug it into my spreadsheet. It then tells me in a tally form how many um, links it has in each DR range, so from zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, etc. 
And then from here, what I'll do is I'll compare it to the top competitors. So maybe the top five competitors, just to see how it uh, tallies out. Because to be honest, like DR sometimes can be quite easily manipulated if you have a lot of high DR links and it's not always accurate. So I look at the overall range of results. So from here, um, we also go down to a page by page level. Most of the time we're trying to rank it in a page. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go to that URL and see how many referring domains go to that inner page as well. So th this is where it becomes a little bit tricky because, um, for example, like Gear Hungry might rank for a page where you've got 20 referring domains to it, whereas Gear Hungry only has a few, but they have the overall domain power that really boosts it up. There are ways to outdo this, but to be honest, I'm just looking to see how many referring domains there are and to have a look at the averages of the top three to see whether I think I can compete. So now we're on to uh, domain relevance. This is something that, uh, to be honest, I feel like a lot of people used to ignore, um, but it's definitely becoming more popular. So um, when, when we're talking about domain relevance, uh, I t I'm, I'm thinking about how much of that site is about that particular topic. So I've got an example in the next slide for you. So for example, again, we're going to use Gear Hungry, but also a site called Trail Cam Pro. As the site name suggests, Trail Cam Pro is about trail cams. So when we look at the um, overall amount of pages on that site, um, that are about trail cameras compared to Gear Hungry. Gear Hungry. When you express it as a percentage, like Gear Hungry has less than 0.01% of their pages about trail cameras, whereas Trail Cam Pro has um, pretty much over 75% of their uh, pages include trail camera within the title. So Google can see that this domain is way more relevant, and like this is how smaller niche sites are able to outbeat the higher authority sites. So here are a few examples of domain relevance in action where a super small uh, niche site is able to beat out um, much bigger authority sites. So here are a few examples, like I said, um, if you look at their overall DR and the amount of referring domains, it's not always as high as their competitors, but they're still outdoing them. So now we're on to backlink relevance. So how do we determine whether a backlink is uh, relevant to your site? So for example, if we have an article about trail cameras um, that's linking to your site, one's from Trail Camera Pro, but the other one's from Forbes. The one from Trail Camera Pro is going to be a lot more relevant than uh, the one from Forbes. I'm not saying that it's more valuable because obviously Forbes is a super high authority site, but I'm just saying the Trail Camera Pro one is more relevant. This is because the domain in itself is about trail cameras. All of its content is about trail cameras um, I think the people that really first um, sort of grasped onto uh, relevance was OMG machines with their uh, RSOS so the way that this works is they say that um, if the domain is about the topic it's the most relevant it can be if the URL is about the topic it's the next level down so they went domain URL title h1 meta description and content so this is a degree of um, changeability once you have the domain you can't change your domain once your URL is set, um, you'd have to, you know, maybe set up a 301, etc. Once the title, the title's limited to a certain amount of characters, um, and so on. So it's a lot easier to put trail camera within the content than it is to put it in within within the title. So um, this this is a like really good concept in my opinion, and something that we're doing more and more of. Uh, we're trying to make sure that the links are RSOS. But the um, other the other person that really like influenced me with regards to um, the uh, backlink relevance was Grindstone uh, SEO. I believe his uh, Twitter handle is at Grindstone SEO. Um, but if you just search it, I'm sure it will pop up. Um, he had a fantastic Twitter thread all about um, relevance and strength and just this massive case study. Um, but he broke his, link, his links down into high authority, low authority, domain relevant, URL relevant, and no relevance. So there's, we uh, just cut out the no relevance straight away that this is just not a link that we're building anymore. Um, but the, the real like gray area is what constitutes high authority. So for me, I say since uh, Ahrefs' is DR is logarithmic, uh, anything over DR50 is a pretty strong link. So that's high authority to me. Low authority is anything, for, uh, anything between 20 and 50. So he breaks it down into uh, this... this um, this way of doing it. So he has LAUR, HAUR, LADR, HADR. So low authority URL relevant, high authority URL relevant, high authority domain relevant, low authority domain relevant. So um, <clears throat> this is quite an easy way to think about it. So for example, the link from Forbes would be a high authority site, 
but the the best it could be is URL relevant. So is is Trail Camera within the URL? Um, whereas Trail Camera Pro might be a low authority low authority site, but it's domain relevant. So when we look at it, what links came out on top? So high authority domain relevant came out number one, which is no surprise to anyone. High authority uh, URL, uh, URL relevant came out second, um, but uh, low authority domain relevant uh, trailed behind in third. Um, but when you send um, low authority domain relevant uh, links in bursts, it can have the same effect as high authority URL relevant. So it's always worth considering this uh, when you're purchasing your links um, because sometimes it can be cheaper to get these links than it is to get a link from you know, uh, Forbes, for example. Um, the low authority URL relevance really didn't move the needle and the other types of links, the no relevant links, didn't move the needle at all. So how do we... Um, you know, quantify the uh, backlink relevance. So I have two ways of doing this. If I'm going to quickly do it, the way I'll do it is I'll go to Ahrefs, look at the overall backlinks of the site, and I'll search a keyword, but I'll use the filters um, to only include pages which have the keyword that I've just searched within the URL or the title. Um, so then I'll just have a general look and feel. I'll have a look at the LSIs and see how many there is. And this this just is to give a quick feel to see if there's a lot of relevance. Like if you have 100 backlinks and 75 of them have this main keyword within the title and the URL of the other backlink pages, then you know it's a good sign that there's going to be very re there's very high relevance. If I'm going to spend a little bit more time, what I'm going to do is export all the backlinks into. Um, an Excel sheet and leave the column with DR. I'll then sort them out by um, DR, highest to lowest. Anything above a DR 50 automatically becomes high authority. Anything between 20 and 50 becomes a low authority and I'll remove anything under DR 20. Uh, from there, I go through and I look at what level of relevance is it? Is it domain relevant or URL relevant? And then it creates a tally on um, uh, which determines you know, whether it's LADR, HADR, etc. So of course there are hundreds of other factors with SEO. There's on-page, there's content, and um, to, like, the, like off-page is only a small part. Like do, do not look, neglect these parts um, at all. Um, this, this is just what this talk is about. Like go and listen to the other videos on this YouTube channel and learn more about the on-page. It really can help. We, for example, had uh, one uh, really big technical error that made us jump for a super competitive keyword from, you know, bottom of page four straight up to the top of page um, two. Uh, just from this one change alone and you know if, if we were trying to do this force it with backlinks I don't even think it would have been possible but it would have cost us a lot. So you might have mentioned that I didn't talk about anchor text and um, this is something that I'm going to go on to in the next section. So how do you build an effective link building campaign? So how do I apply what you just spoke about? So it comes down to in my opinion backlinks, anchor text selection and velocity. So when we talk about backlinks um, I think for me, the big thing is focus on uh, the domain hierarchy, you know, what Grindstone talks about, um, the higher uh, the higher powered links, and also RSOS is essentially applying what Grindstone says, but in a different way. Um, but also a big thing for me is I really juice up the root of the domain, so I send a lot of backlinks to the home page. Um, I don't try to force all my effort into inner pages. I just think this is a bad strategy. So for example, if you've got 50% of your links going to one inner page, I just don't think it looks natural and I just don't think it works as effectively as really pushing um, the uh, root domain and then sending a few links to uh, the inner pages. This is something that I especially see um, when uh, clients come to DFY, you know, they've got a massive keyword that they're really trying to push because, you know, it's going to be worth a lot of money to them. Uh, best ride on uh, lawnmowers or something. So there's a really high commission. So they're like, oh, okay, I can justify spending a couple thousand on these backlinks to this page, but they don't want to send it to the home page as well. So they, they haven't built enough power to um, allow the domain to enter this top level of the SERP. Our page level is a lot stronger, but there's still this level of domain power that needs to be reached. So the way that I do it quite a lot is um, send the majority of my links to the root domain, as I said, and then um, I'll send quite a lot of links to my supporting content. And then um, by this time, you know, like my inner pages might only need a couple of links to rank. Um, so if this, this can be a great strategy because you're also reducing the risk of your money pages, uh, which are the pages that are generating you money. So there's a few things to avoid. Um, there's link loss. Um, so for this one, 
Um, I, honestly, like if if you lose links, it's just a terrible um, terrible signal to Google. Like it says that your site is now not as relevant. So if if I lose links, I'm always trying to replace them, either on the same site, um, but. I'm always trying to double the amount of links that I lost, to be honest. I just think it's a terrible trust signal to Google. Um, there's another couple of things that I always try to do, um, especially with the bigger projects. I'm really using SERP boy to look at the competitors, see what's causing the uh, movements in the SERP, uh, try to pull it back, use a couple of the methods that Grindstone talks about within his thread. Um, so using search operators to see you know, when a new link's built and see what the effect is. Because, um, for example, he talks about exact match anchors reducing the... Um, rankings of sites and this is something that I've noticed myself as well um, but we also really do tiered link building this is something that I'm really starting to test a lot more I'm just trying to see if um, building tiered links to um, the different types of backlinks uh, have different effects whether I should be using tier 2 PBNs whether I should be using niche edits etc and just this is this is something that over the next year hopefully um, I'll have a blog post out on with my test results. So anchor text selection. This is something that I purposely um, didn't talk about previously. And this is because in my opinion, anchor text selection really doesn't matter as much as it used to. Google can tell what your page is trying to rank for. Um, you don't need to, you know, send these anchors telling it, oh, this page is about this. I think honestly, like, so one of my friends used to rank for fat loss in America um, and he the majority of his backlink profile was just naked URLs and the title of his um the title of his page <clears throat> and there was no fancy you know these ratios must be met which a lot of SEOs do um so for for me I think that Google can tell what you're trying to rank for use the safest anchors possible so these to me are branded and URLs so th these make up the vast vast majority of our anchor text selection now there's a point uh, literally probably a year ago now where partials were really working and this is something that we uh, nailed down on and you know like we, literally every anchor we were doing was a different uh, partial and it worked fantastically but I think times are just moving on um, this is uh, a good time to say I do agree with Grindstone that exact, man uh, exact match anchor texts are not a good strategy to be using and quite often uh, we'll have clients that want to use them um, and they go against our advice to use them and they get a negative result. <clears throat> so yeah I, I think for me I definitely uh, with a new campaign we start off extremely safe and this, this sometimes can seem a little frustrating to new clients they want us to you know say there's this magic ratio of what anchors we're going to use but when we come back with our suggestions there's a lot of you know URL branded and branded partials um, uh, but luckily we typically do get good results from these so they then become believers so we start off very safe. If you're stuck on uh, the bottom of page three, for example, and you keep on sending links and you just don't get any movement, even though you know you're sending good quality links, um, this could be because of your previous anchor text selection, um, and you might have a penalty that you can't see. Um, this is something that we also see again. So you're juicing up this inner page, and the page just isn't moving. And then this is definitely a time to consider: uh, is this anchor text like an anchor text issue? But what do you do if you're stuck? Um, you have three options. You can delete the link, you can change the link, or uh, you can disavow link. The best option to do is completely remove the link if you can. The next best option is to disavow, and we never ever recommend changing the link. Uh, this is just a massive footprint, and I'd not recommend doing it. So link velocity. This really depends on the type of site. So whether you're dealing with you know a local site or a site that's trying to compete for multinational terms, this can make a huge difference. Um, and so for us, what well, the first thing we do is look at the size of the backlink profile. Is a site got uh, has the site got around ten backlinks? Um, so if you build twenty backlinks, you know you're tripling the size of the backlink profile, which is a huge jump opposed to building the same twenty backlinks for a site which has maybe five hundred plus links. So proportionally, it's a tiny increase compared. How much traffic does the website get? I think that this is a big one for me. When a site starts getting more traffic, I think you can justify more backlinks. It makes sense. More people are on your site, it's more readers, more readers, more shares, for example, and so you can send more backlinks. Um, so th another one that people don't always take into consideration is no follow and do follow backlinks. I think that there's a huge difference between these. So um, I, like, I'm not scared to push you know, no follow backlinks. Um, as much as I am do follow backlinks. I just don't think they're under the same uh, brush with Google. 
But the main thing for me is stay consistent. We quite often get people who come to us with a quarterly budget and they're like, oh, we want to, um, you know, month, uh, we've got a three month budget, but we want to spend it all in month one. Um, I just don't think it's a good idea. I'd much rather build 30 links over three months and build 30 links in one month. So this is just just me and what I've seen uh, with DFY clients. But uh, for me, I'd much rather just stay consistent and have a nice steady growth. So how do you build an effective backlink campaign? So you build high quality, um, relevant links. This is, you know, talking about RSOS as well as the overall domain power of these links. Um, so just making sure that you're getting these uh, the links that Grindstone talks about. So the high authority domain relevant, the high authority URL relevant, and the low authority domain relevant. These should really be the backbone of your link building campaigns. For us, we always recommend building using conservative anchors to help future-proof the site. Like We don't want to risk a penalty from sh picking stupid anchors. The gains that we get from these are just not worth it. SEO has fantastic ROI. Like take this to our advantage. If you need to build a few more links in the big picture, it probably doesn't matter. And if it does, maybe consider your niche selection. Um, so then we go on to velocity. Look at your competitors. What what are your competitors doing for link velocity? What How big is your current backlink profile? Just just look at it and be sensible. It's very hard to say, uh, okay, you can build you know 50 links per month or whatever. It's just gauging it compared to your competitors and also looking at your site as it is. It really is quite simple to build an effective backlink campaign. It's just a matter of being able to get these high quality links. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. Um, but I, before finishing, I have a few acknowledgements to make. Um, these are some people that outside of DFY and SEO AI have helped me uh, during my journey with uh, off-page SEO. Um, please don't reach out to them all and harass them, um, but a lot of them will be at uh, future events such as Search Birmingham, uh, Glasgow SEO and Chiang Mai. So definitely take the opportunity to network and meet up with these people if you get the chance. Um, so appreciate all of the help uh, that you guys have given me over the past couple of years. Um, but yeah, th these are just a, just a few people. I'm sure there's some people that I've missed off. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to get back to you. And if you want us to continue doing video content, um, again, if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to learn, um, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get this done for you. Thanks, guys.